All right, guys, welcome back. Today we are doing simple harmonic motion, but we are talking about graph. And these are harder based problems, so get ready for that. I'm also excited because I like to try to make things that seem hard as simple as possible, so let's see how I do with that. All right, so introduction to graphs with simple harmonic motion. So let's just kind of look at this first point. Objects under simple harmonic motion oscillate between certain values and form the shape of cosine and sine waves. So when something is going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, certain values are the same as they go back and forth. Maybe this is position negative three, maybe this is position three, oops, I drew this wrong. And it kind of oscillates between negative three and three and, and so on and so forth. So we have this oscillation, you know, that looks like a sine wave or a cosine wave or cosine. And um, same thing with the speed, you know, maybe it's, you know, speed here is five meters per second and zero on the end and zero on the end and it goes from zero, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and goes back and forth like that. So next point notice when the object reaches its amplitude that the velocity is zero and its acceleration is at its maximum okay so first graph over here we see that at time equals zero it is at its amplitude we should also know that when an object is at its amplitude that means its velocity is zero so when it's stretched out as much as possible or compressed as much as possible its velocity is zero and that's what we see at the velocity versus time graph. We should also know when it's stretched out or compressed as much as possible that the force or the acceleration is at a maximum. And that's what we see over here. The acceleration is at the amplitude. So it's in the opposite side of where the position is. Because if it's all the way to the right, that means the force and acceleration is to the left. If it's all the way to the right, that means the force and acceleration is to the right. All right. Um, next point, notice when the object reaches position zero, the object uh, attains its maximum velocity and has an acceleration of zero. So we should know that the fastest it's ever going to go is when it is at the equilibrium point, which we often call the zero, position zero. Okay, at this point, remember there's no net force, zero acceleration, and this is the point where the velocity is at a max. Okay, and that's what we should see. When it is at position zero here, we can see at this point, that is when the velocity is at its maximum. And then we can see that that is the point also when the acceleration is zero. Sorry, graphs don't perfectly align, but pretty good. <laughs> and then it just does this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I know it's a lot. I think as we do the as the example problems, it'll it'll feel better and easier. But we'll, we're going to be doing a lot of these so that you get used to it. All right. So this is the position as a function of time. This is the main formula that we're going to use and understand throughout this um, part of the unit. So the position as a function of time for an object in simple harmonic motion can be derived from the equation uh, position over time is equal to the amplitude times cosine theta. So if we're starting at the amplitude at time t equals zero, that means it's going to be oscillating back and forth if we have like an object and let's say it starts at the amplitude over here and then this is the negative amplitude and then this position is zero. It's going to oscillate back and forth and back and forth like that. Okay. And that's what this is showing. Okay, that's what this graph is showing. Uh, so the formula that we're going to see more is position as a function of time is equal to the amplitude cosine omega or angular frequency times the time. Okay. And you can derive this angular frequency again. which You should know that that is 2 pi over the period. Okay, so this is the main formula that we're going to use as we do these problems. I know that's a lot that looks really confusing, but uh, it'll, it'll, as we do problems, hopefully it'll make more sense. Okay, so when we look at this graph, we see this position as a function of time. 
right here, but it's not filled in. So we can see the amplitude is two seconds, and we can see that it takes the amplitude from to go when something is oscillating back and forth. You know, it's going to go like this and all the way back. That's one period. So if you look at this, we can see that the time it takes to go all the way from where it started to where it comes back is from here to here. And that gives us the period is equal to five seconds. And we can see it's going to take another five seconds for it to cycle again. So that's the period. It took five seconds to do every cycle. So we could change this position as a function of time. We could do position as a function of time is equal to the amplitude, which is 2 in this case, times cosine 2 pi divided by the period, which is 5, times the time. And this will tell us what where the object is at any given time if we just plug in t. And make sure to be in radians for this. Okay, let's finally start doing some example problems. If position was measured in meters and time in seconds, looking at the graph, at what time uh, in seconds is the block at its positive its at its positive amplitude? Okay, so we can see that over here it's at its positive amplitude, over here it's at its positive amplitude, and over here. So same graph as last time. So zero, five, and ten seconds. Every five seconds, it's going to be at its positive amplitude. Part B, at what time is the black moving the fastest? So let's think about this. So it starts out, whoops, it starts out at its amplitude. And then let, this is a negative amplitude. Where is it going to be moving the fastest? That is at position zero. So right here, right here, right here, and right here. Okay. 1.25 seconds, 3.75 seconds, 6.25 seconds, 8.75 seconds. And remember, a full cycle is from here to here. So from here to here, that's going to be this period, which is 5 seconds, divided by 4, which is 1.25 seconds. That's what we get. Okay? All right. Hope that made sense. Anyway, watch it back if it didn't because it is hard to grasp at the beginning, but it will as you keep working on it. All right, moving on. All right, so we talked about position as a function of time, and we have the formula here. Um, don't need to know this as much, but just need to know a little bit. Velocity as a function of time is equal to negative v max times sine theta. Okay, and that should make sense. So you know, at time t equals zero, if it's at its amplitude here, because, you know, cosine, when cosine is zero, that means cosine is equal to one, it's just at its amplitude. Uh, at this point over here, the velocity is going to be zero. Okay, so when sine is equal uh, to zero, that's just zero, so this just becomes zero, because it's not moving in this instance. Okay? Anyway, so we can kind of derive the formula here. Same over here, negative a max. So it's, this is pretty much like the opposite of the position versus function of time because when it's on the right position, it's negative. When it's on the left position, it's positive. Okay. I don't want to go too much into detail because we don't know, need to know too much about this, but just in general, this is following kind of what we learned at the beginning with these three graphs and how, how they interact with each other. Okay. So look at that again if you need to. All right, let's look at this. Uh, a glider oscillates at an end of an ideal spring of force constant 200 newton per meter. Okay, maybe I'll write this down somewhere. Okay, it goes 250 newton per meter. The graph shows the acceleration of the glider as a function of time. Find the maximum acceleration of the car. This is acceleration as a function of time now. And we should just be able to see that the maximum acceleration is going to be at this 12 uh, meters per second mark. So that's 12 meters per second squared. If the amplitude of the glider uh, is 0 0.12 meters, what is the mass of the glider? So part B. Amplitude is equal to 0 0.012 meters. All right, so how are we going to do this? So we know the amplitude. We know the acceleration max, 
12 meters per second squared. We know the K value, 250 newton per meter. And now we're looking for the mass. So we should know that, if, let's look at a graph here. Let's say it is at its amplitude. This means that the force uh, of the spring is going to be the most and this also means that the acceleration is going to be the max 12 meters per second squared. So we could say the force of the spring is equal to mass times acceleration, that's the net force. And we also know that force of spring is kx is equal to ma. And we're looking at the max, so k is 250. And this x is going to be the amplitude because it's stretched as much as possible. So that's going to be 0.012. The mass is what we're looking for, and acceleration is 12 meters per second squared. So let's put this into our calculator, and we should be able to figure this out. 250 times 0.012 divided by 12, and we get 0 0.25 kilograms. Okay, part C is, what is the maximum force the spring exerts on the, on the glider? And we kind of already found this. We can just plug in, we could plug in one of two things, the mass times the mass, max acceleration or the force of the spring K times the amplitude. So I'm just going to do force of spring is equal to mass 0.25 times the maximum acceleration, which is 12. And then this is going to give us, I should know this, uh, three, meter, uh, three newtons. Okay. All right, hope that was all right. All right, let's look at this next next example. An ideal spring is attached to a support and pull the distance A in the negative direction. Okay, so like we can see here, it's in the negative direction at time t equals zero. The mass oscillates with a period of t, meaning it goes all the way up and all the way down, back down. That took t seconds. Which answer shows the correct position versus time and velocity as a function of time graph? Okay, so it should start at negative A. So this one is good, uh, th that one's good, that one's good, oh, that one is not good, this one is good, that one is not good. Okay, and we should also know that when it's at its amp amplitude, the velocity as a function of time should be zero. It should start at zero. So that does not start at zero. This one does not start at zero. This one, again, doesn't start at zero. This one does start at zero. This one does start at zero. So it seems like right now this is the only option here. Okay. Another thing that we should be able to tell is that when it is um, when it is at the equilibrium, that's when it's going the fastest, and that's what we can see right here. Okay. All right. Moving on. All right, a pendulum is graphed with the, the angle that the string makes with the vertical as a function of time, as shown in the graph. What is the period, frequency, angular frequency, and amplitude of the pendulum's motion? Okay, so now we're talking about a pendulum. And it's going back and forth. Uh, I guess it starts at an angle six degrees, uh, not to scale. Okay. Uh, duh, 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 okay. What is the period? Well, we can see that when it goes all the way here and all the way back, that is the period. It goes from here and comes back. That is one period. And so that looks like around 1.5 seconds. Next is the frequency. So remember, frequency is just the inverse of the period. So we could just do 1 divided by 1.5. And we get 0 0.67. Okay, so let's see. 1.5 frequency, 0 0.67 hertz. Uh, and then we have angular frequency. Remember that is just 2 pi times frequency. So that's going to be equal to 4.19. Radians per second, and okay, so that's everything. Do, do, do. And the angle makes with the vertical as a function of time, as shown in the graph. Okay, 
So, oops, and the amplitude. Amplitude is 6 degrees. That's the furthest it goes. Great. All right, so that's all good. Part B is how long is the pendulum? So we should know that the period of the pendulum is equal to 2 pi square root of the length divided by gravity. So we know what the period is. That's 1.5. And it's going to be equal to the square root of the length, which we're looking for. And gravity, we're assuming we're on Earth, so that's 10. Oops, I forgot 2 pi. So let's figure out what this length is equal to. So first I'm going to do 1.5 divided by parentheses 2 pi. You should use parentheses whenever you have that pi there. And then I'm going to square that and then multiply by 10. And I get length is 0 0.57 meters. Oops, that should be meters. Great. Okay, is it possible to determine the math for the bob? No, it does. It is not possible because no matter what the mass is of this, whether it's a small mass or a big mass, it's going to be oscillating the same. So, nope, it is impossible to tell. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to have one more section after this, and that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.